Hello everybody, welcome back to the van build. It is so exciting when I get to say that again because there have been a few times in the last two years when I've kind of circled back and done little renovations or like rebuilt areas of my van and it's always such a um, frustrating yet empowering and fun experience to do little upgrades to the van. But this one, I am the absolute most excited for. So today I'm installing a Cubic Mini in my van. And before I start, I do wanna run through a few things that are really important for you to know, especially if you are considering installing a Cubic Mini in your own tiny space. If you wanna skip this next few minutes of information and go right to the install, go ahead to this timestamp and enjoy. To start, here's a little bit of background about why I'm installing a Cubic Mini in my van. So three years ago, I did my entire build myself, which will really come in handy when making adjustments like this. And I've been living in it full time for two years. Throughout those two years, when I've needed heat, I've relied on my Chinese diesel heater, which uh, is installed right under in this bench that I'm sitting on right now. There are so many upsides to having a diesel heater. I highly recommend them for the majority of people. They are super easy. They're very efficient. It really pumps out the heat. Mine comes from the floor, so it heats the whole space. It's a really great source of heat and it's cheap. I got mine for like $125 off of eBay. The way that I travel and live this lifestyle is I like to go in the middle of nowhere for a few weeks at a time and just live in one spot. I used to do more like run and gun type travel and I think people that are really into specific outdoor sports like skiing or climbing do more of that. I have friends that do that, that's why I know, where they want to hit the slopes every day. They're coming to and from the mountains. People that are climbing, they're traveling every day to the crag and back to a public land and then back to the crag. And so I think for people that do that type of travel, having a tiny wood stove in their van might not be the best for them. There are a lot of different ways to live this lifestyle and for me personally, the Cubic Mini makes sense. Whereas it might not make sense for other people and I think that's important to keep in mind. Now I wanna to touch on a few things that are really important to know before you decide on installing a Cubic Mini in your little tiny house. It is recommended that you remove the top part of the flue thing uh, before you drive. It's not advised to drive while there is still any heat or hot coals in your Cubic Mini. So making sure that those are cleaned out and put out before you drive is going to be an important thing. If you are going to be transporting wood, keep in mind that it's illegal to cross the border with wood. You can't transport wood. That can lead to transferring really harmful diseases and insects to other parts of the country. And let's just all agree that we're not gonna do that because we don't have to be that selfish, right? We can just find wood or buy wood in a different state where it was grown. Which brings me to some of the reasons why I have decided to do this. Number one, the catalyst is obviously this winter in the North Woods. Chris and I and Akila and Kobuk are parking our rigs up in the North Woods of Wisconsin and our goal is to not leave the land for three and a half months throughout the winter. So I wanted a really awesome source of heat that I can fuel solely from what I have available. Also, we aren't going to be moving, so this type of system is perfect for just parking and being there for a while. So I am going to completely remove my diesel heater and instead use that space for storage. That is it for the information that I wanna start with. Let's get into the install, and obviously I will be sharing as much as I know and learn throughout this process. So let's get into it. I'm a little nervous about cutting this hole in my roof. As I have done more research and looked at my van, I've realized that the very first thing that I need to do is remove and move my solar panels. All right, both panels are up and I am going to clean up these holes and then go ahead and seal them. Maybe a little disclaimer, um, maybe not all of my decisions or install practices are ones you should also make. So be smart, it is a fire hazard. 
So right now I am working on just assembling some of the pieces so that I can have things a little bit more pieced together and understand how it's all gonna work. So this is my five inch flue. This will basically be going through the roof. Um, it won't be the entire flue, but you'll see that later. So what I'm gonna do, I know that I want this where it is flat, oh, about here. Some people will use a compass, some people will make a um, template, both of those are great options. But for me, because of the nature of my install, I'm just going to use this. This portion of 5 inch flue pipe is insulated and will slip around the double walled 3 inch flue. I have a feeling that this is right where I set up my wiring. Wouldn't that be just a classic occurrence? It is recommended to complete the first few hours of burn outside of your tiny home. So the night of day one, that's exactly what I did. Good morning, everybody. The burn went awesome last night. I ended up burning it, letting it cool, burning it, letting it cool maybe like three or four times. It is a beautiful day today and I'm starting with just getting this hole cut. I will say there's a lot of things that I do as far as my build or upgrades where I'm like, yeah, if I mess up, like I can recover from it or I'll just figure it out. This is one of those things that I don't think if I mesh this up that I would be able to recover from. And with that, we're just going. Three, two, one, go. All right, seven inch hole is complete. It looks huge to me, but it makes sense. And they have trim pieces. Exactly at seven, exactly at seven. Call me a pro. From the bottom, I drilled holes on the edges of the, the circle so I can just create a circle from this. This requires a seven inch hole so that the five inch flue pipe has a minimum of one inch clearance on all sides. This big scary task is done. I think the other annoying task is going to be building my wall. I would like this to expand all the way over to my bed. This is pretty good, I think. Let's do 20 and a half. And I need to put these two together and then I'm gonna have to snip it so that this is one foot above the tallest part of my roof. All right, I'm not gonna lie, cutting that stovepipe without an angle grinder has been the worst part of this install yet. When you cut your stovepipe, it, it will be disconnected, but that's okay because this is the part that needs to be connected to the bottom stovepipe, and then the top part that you cut off will be covered with the thingy on top. I'm gonna go ahead and run up with my five inch, come back in here and make sure that the five inch stops about two inches below the ceiling, that's what's recommended. Then I can go up top and mark where I need it cut. Wait, why don't I just measure it? Yeah, I'm not doing that shit. All right, five inch pipe is cut. Highly, highly suggest if you have an angle grinder, just use the angle grinder. But I don't, because no, it has it. I'm gonna start with my flu shield. The install of these like mounting pieces is pretty straightforward, but just so you can really see what I'm doing, these bushings or spacers, some people call them, um, they're gonna go behind the metal. So they're, they're there to separate the metal from the wood. And so the screw will go through into that spacer like this. I might need to use a different screw because I'm only using half inch ply. There. So now this is where this comes in, like so. So that little bracket is what my my wood stove will hook into and then screw into. So my tray still needs to slide in here, but before I do that, I need to put my wood stove on here and connect the feet down to what is the top of the of the tray. Isn't 
Doesn't that look so good? The last piece that I'm gonna get done tonight. Won't that look nice? One last little screw. I love how much progress I made today. I really like how everything is turning out. There are a few finishing pieces that I need to do tomorrow as well as finishing the, the flue. So everything that's exiting the roof. So I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, everybody. I spent a good chunk of the morning getting the second wall figured out. I'm going to make it span all the way across to my bed. So this will create um, a shield and they actually sent an extra heat shield and I just cut it down with a metal jigsaw blade. It took forever, it was horrible because this stuff is kind of thick. Once again, if you have an angle grinder, use it. Um, so this is going to be then the nice little heat shield here. They did send extra bushings, so I'm gonna be using the same steel bushings that they had sent for the other pieces. In the instructions, Cubic Mini says that the cub should have 20 inches from the side of the wood stove to uh, any combustibles. So in this case, the combustibles would be um, my bed and myself, and I don't want that. So because there is not clearly 20 inches, I will be just putting that side shield on there just to be safe. So this is the big rubber boot that will be placed down on the flue pipe and then sealed around the edge. The first thing that I need to do though is secure this. So Cubic Mini gives you two L brackets with self-tapping screws. So these are to be placed like so to hold your large flue in place. I need to cut this boot to the diameter of my flue pipe, which is five inches, like I mentioned a bajillion times. So on each of these, you can't see it very well probably, but each of these lines mark a specific diameter. And so the third one down does say three and a quarter to five and a quarter. So that's where I'm gonna do it. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that this is all very clean so that the sealant sticks well. This rubber boot has a metal trim this that is. molds with the contour of your roof. Also, according to the instructions that Cubic Mini provided, the five inch insulated flue pipe should sit about an inch and a half beneath the three inch flue. Now, I'm just taking a bunch of self tappers. Now that the boot is sealed, this is the last piece to go on. It comes with the hardware that you need. There. Look at that. All right, I only have a few last little finishing pieces and then the Cubic Mini install is complete. I'm not gonna lie, I've been looking forward to this one all day. I forgot about the sides, so I'm gonna just quickly screw these sides on. So I have been up here for, I think this is three days now. So this, I've been using this as my main heat source for three days. And I wanted to make sure that I did this as a part of the video so that you guys can 
see it working, see how the install went, and so that I can talk a little bit about some advice and some things that I've learned or things that I would want to do differently. I also want to just announce like a disclaimer that this is not professional advice, this is not a professional install, this is very much a DIY and the things that I'm comfortable with maybe some of you wouldn't be and that's totally okay. Okay? I'm going to start with the actual stove itself. It puts off a good amount of heat. It is not um, too hot for this space by any means. With that being said, I think things would feel a little bit differently if it was installed lower. Obviously, many of you already know this, but I built my van almost three years ago now. So this was kind of an afterthought. If I had wanted to do this in my build, from the beginning, I would have installed it lower to the ground because of course heat rises it makes sense for a wood stove to be placed lower. But there are ways to get around that so I do plan to have a little fan pushing air down because this area right here um, stays quite cool. But on the flip side it's also really nice because I can load it from bed so that's kind of cool. Right now it's about 20 degrees outside. Um, uncomfortable in here with just a flannel and a hat on so depending on how hot you burn it and for how long it's go it's been going it's so comfortable in a space like this i emailed cubic mini and i sent them a photo of my install and they did send me a few um things to keep in mind now they have a lot of liability on their hands so of course they are very strict about the minimum clearance of things. For example, this space from, from the top of the cubic mini to the ceiling needs to be a minimum of 30 inches. Mine is not. And I knew that going into it. Um, so they did recommend heat shielding my ceiling. And they did say for now, because I was up here and using it, they said for now, just use your hand as a test. And if it is, it is hot to the touch, then you need to shield it. And I'm going to be honest, it's warm to the touch. And and there might be a time down the road where I do decide to heat shield it. And that will be very easy just to throw some bushings in and some metal. And I'll be able to shield this and then it'll be fine. Another thing to make sure, especially if you're installing this <clears throat> kind of as an afterthought, like I did, where you're kind of fitting into, into a space, the flue length total needs to be at minimum 40 inches. I am right around 40 inches. And the reason for that, and, and by the flue length, I mean from the, the top of your stove all the way to the top of, of that double walled flue out the roof, that whole thing needs to be 40 inches. If it is less than 40 inches, like if you're trying to, to cut space and you don't want it actually a foot above your roof or whatever, um, if that's not 40 inches, you will not get a good draft. Um, luckily, Mine is great. The, the Fluax is like the engine to your Cubic Mini. And so if that's not long enough, you're not gonna get a good enough draft. It's not gonna be able to burn well and efficiently, and it's not as safe. So if it's not burning well and efficiently, you're more likely to get an accumulation of junk in your flu, which is an issue, of course, because then it can start flu fires and all that jazz. You just don't want that. Okay, another little thing that I worked around. So I didn't want to take up any more space this way by lifting my cubic mini, but this is the wall mount, okay? So often there is nothing even below the wood stove when installing it, but I did the wall mount just on my countertop. Ideally there should be an inch of space below the wall mount because this back shield requires airflow to keep it cool. So since I did not do that because I didn't want to lose another inch of space between ceiling and wood stove, I created airflow from the back. So since my wall is floating, I drilled a bunch of holes from the back so there's air moving through that to cool off the back shield. Um, as for this plywood, so on some of my social media accounts, I posted, you know, a short little install video and people were so upset with me that I used plywood as backing. This, when I emailed the company, I asked them about it. They said plywood is fine because of this metal shielding. Um, this can be attached to any wall with proper airflow, of course. And the fact that mine is a floating wall, so there's extra airflow. 
it's totally fine. It barely, barely gets warm to the touch. Sometimes up behind the flue, it'll be slightly warm, but I am not at all worried about this plywood combusting. It stays very, very cool. I recently got a question about um, the wood stove and somebody said, I want one so bad, uh, but what would you actually recommend if you know, you're living like a typical van life? And if I'm being honest, <laughs> unless you guys want to work for your heat and, and take some of the comfort out of things, sure, get a wood stove, but a diesel heater is so great for so many, so many things. This, it has a, you know, a level 10 comfort level. The aesthetic is amazing. I love it. I'm so happy I switched to this, but I did have a diesel heater for two years. So here are a few things that are different. When I had my diesel heater, I would go to sleep and I'd have my little remote right next to me. When my alarm would go off in the morning, I would press the little button for my diesel heater and then I'd press snooze. And by the time I woke up, my van was warm <laughs> and I could get out of bed and it'd be, just be warm like normal. This is different because um, until it's really cold outside, I probably won't run this throughout the night because we're all, we're all fine being in bed and cozied up with layers and then I'm not really wasting wood. Like this morning, I woke up and got out of bed and put cold clothes on and stood here shivering as I started the fire. So there's definitely extra work. It is um, dirtier, of course, like I have ash and little pieces of sticks and, and little pieces of bark from my wood, but that is just part of having a wood stove. The install is actually quite simple. And I think that it's something that you guys can definitely do on your own. Um, just read instructions and make sure your clearances are right. And the Cubic Mini customer service was incredible. They got back to me the same day that I sent them the initial email and they even took it upon themselves to be like, hey, thanks for the photo. Here are a few other things that I would recommend. Overall, I am so happy that I've made the decision to get a Cubic Mini. And I'm so happy that I installed it because it makes me appreciate it so much more. And I also understand where everything is and how everything is sealed and the things that I want to kind of keep an eye out for the next few weeks. I have already made some tea on it and I am going to remove this top rack so that I can cook on it. I want to thank you so much for sticking around for the install. I know you all were looking forward to this for just as long as I was. <laughs> <laughs> if you learned anything or enjoyed watching me install this, please like and subscribe. It does really help us out. And in just a few days, um, Chris and I will be parked up here permanently for the next few months. So make sure to stick around and watch all of the shenanigans that are about to go down up here in the Northwoods. All right, everybody. I think that's it. Akil and I will see you next week. This, um, is shitty light. Did you know that your ear's in the way? Oh, shit. You know what I just realized? This isn't going to be really supported. Whatever. <laughs> okay. How am I supposed to do this? So, the three-inch stove's tight. Stove. Jesus. Um, I don't really know how to do this. This is so cute! <laughs> Mom, you should see how cute this looks. Oh, I don't want to do this. This is so sketchy. Is this right? Yeah. Oh! Wow, I really sliced myself. Um, well, I can't feel it, so. Shit, it's really bleeding. I wonder if I have any tape. Oh, I have electrical tape. I'm almost out of daylight. You can't be getting hurt, Lena. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun.